Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. I know I am late with the upload. I'm sorry my life is chaotic and I went out on Friday and I've been fasting so when I went out on Friday it just kind of took a toll on me. Saturday I woke up and was not doing good but here I am. So we're gonna go ahead and get started and my milk products finally arrived. They finally sent them to me so we'll be trying those products as well. So let's all right I'm using a little bit of black pencil. It's just like a generic black pencil girl. I got this from the store probably Walmart for like 99 cent it is nothing too extravagant love but I'm gonna go in and just fill in my brows I'm using black because I kind of want like a little bit of a contrast on that outer portion and the brown I don't know it's doing it for me but y'all know every so often I gotta switch it up a little bit and I don't even think this is working because girl like I need you to fill in where I'm going um, but yeah, we went out to the Shark Bar in Plano on um, Friday. And let me tell you something. The ballers were out. That was like my only goal. I was already frustrated a little bit before we got there. And that's because y'all know how y'all have like a circle of friends that's just never on time. It don't matter what the hell y'all do, how early you plan, how early you tell them to be there. They're just never on time. And I think that... A part of me be like, I love you, but at the same time, I feel like you're not considerate of my time. And and for me, that's an issue. Every time I go out with like this particular friend, I always plan to be like just a little bit late because her ass is just never on time, right? But she texts me like, I don't know, maybe like an hour or two prior to us supposed to, <clears throat> prior to us meeting oh my gosh couldn't get it out so prior to us meeting she texted me and was like hey i'm leaving the house around seven right we we're supposed to meet at eight so i'm like okay that's fine so i'm rushing i'm getting my shit together to leave out around seven you know i'm always late like i said but if i'm going to be late i'll let you know like an hour or two ahead of time so you're not just you know rushing out or whatever so seven o'clock no 6 55 comes around and i'm literally doing like my final touches like okay we about to go ahead and leave and i get the incoming text oh well, I'm, I'm not going to be there until 8 30. so i'm like <sighs> normally i wouldn't have a problem with it but i had a problem with it now because i'm trying to lose this weight right so in the midst of me trying to lose this weight, I'm trying to fast, which means that I like I don't eat for like 15, 16 hours. And then I have like a certain window that I'm allowed to eat in. So I purposely fasted all damn day to make sure that when we got to the restaurant at eight, I would have time enough to eat and have a drink and then still get back on my fast. Right. So now you've kind of inconvenienced me because now that throws me off. And her thing be, her and her family, like, they love to eat late night. And when I say late night, like, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, they're eating. I don't eat that late because I be hungry in the mornings. So, I eat, like, my final meal will probably be around, I don't know, like, 6 or 7. Like, I don't eat that late. But for them, like, that's nothing for them. So, I was like, okay, I'm already a little bit frustrated that you're not being considerate of my time, but whatever you know what i'm saying because i love you down like you my bestie period so when we finally get there um like i started to get excited because girl i started seeing porsches and a couple mercedes and you know mustangs and just some foreign cars so i was like oh okay so this is where the bar is it's i'm i'm excited to be here because girl i'm tired of going to these hood ass spots with you so finally you picked the spot that i actually want to be at right and i had seen on the menu they had salmon and broccoli or whatever it turns out they didn't have that but whatever that's not the point anyway i'm super excited so i'm like okay cool like this where the sugar daddies be at you know not saying i'm looking for a sugar daddy but i'm not opposed to one you know so um we get in there and luckily like because normally on friday nights they like it's a 40 to 50 minute wait on a table but thank god whoever was in front of us didn't respond to their text or whatever for their table being ready so we were able to just get right on in i was like okay this is meant to be so we sit down and our waitress was horrible let me just say that she's fucking horrible she she did not come over it took her third minutes to come over and even take our order but she was hitting all the tables behind us like i'm not sure if it's just us that they don't like at these establishments but we don't never get good service i think i want to do like a 
of orange today but i kind of want like a little bit of purple in there so i'm gonna start out with this palette right here this is the uh berries palette by juvia's and i'm probably going to use like these two shades right here it's like my transition colors before we get into the orange um but anyway so we sit down you know we're talking we're catching up or whatever and what the hell does she do oh it, like listen i be feeling like it's not even a good night if she don't fucking piss me off honestly but anyway, um, she pissed me off so bad. So the first thing that she did was we were talking and um, she started bringing up one of her friends or whatever. Now I've met this friend before and they're okay. I mean, but the last time, the last interaction, y'all probably seen that video. She had another friend. All three of them worked together. And so when they stopped working together, the one particular friend, right? The one particular friend got upset because me and her got so close like very territorial and then i noticed that because i had hung out with the other friend let's say friend a i hung out with friend a before and she was cool but when she got around friend b i started to peep shit right and she the type of person that don't peep when it's tension in the room until some shit fucking blow up right and i feel like listen you are supposed to have separate friend groups right they, I just don't feel like they should mix outside of like birthdays and stuff like that, special occasions. Like, it's okay to have separate friend groups, but because they're so territorial, they have a fucking problem anytime she has additional friends. Hopefully, that fucking makes sense. I forgot how dark that was. My goodness. Um. Anyway, she starts to tell me that friend A is planning a um trip or whatever and i was like okay good i was like i hope you have fun on your trip i already knew it was gonna be some bullshit but i'm trying to you know set it up like already do not ask me to go because friend a has already shown that when friend b is around it's it's very awkward she acts very different towards me like when certain i hate people like that that act different when certain people are around like they be so cool and chill without this person it's it's very fucking high school so i was like do not ask me and her and friend friend a and friend b are very close so i'm like i really don't even want to go because i can only control my mouth for about two outings you got like two times to fucking try me with the rolling of the eyes and the smart slick comments you got two times to try me before i really get in your ass so i don't even like to put myself in situations like that so i was like no i don't want to go she like, oh, you don't want to go? I mean, I don't understand what the problem is, da, da 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 all this extra stuff. So I'm like, listen, I'm not sure why you don't be peeping the, the slick little comments and, you know, the rolling of the eyes here. And I don't know why. Like, maybe you just intentionally oblivious to shit. I'm not really sure. But I'm telling you that they don't fucking like me and I'm not putting myself in no situation where I might be out of fucking town and in jail somewhere that I don't fucking know. We're just not going to fucking do it. I'm going back in with that deeper shade and we're just going to deepen this up. So anyway, I'm like, look, girl, I'm not fucking going. She's like, you don't ever want to have fun. I do want to have fun, but I also understand the boundaries of friendship. Like you and them girls, very high schoolish to me. I don't, I don't do that. Like, mm, it's not that deep. Where if you my friend, you can't be nobody else friend. Like, girl, we are fucking adults. Why are you so territorial? Like, I think that you need to go to therapy for that. Um. So anyway, we we steady talking or whatever, and. Then the conversation comes up about the type of men that I am into. So I'm like, okay, what what seems to be the problem? So she like, well, I just don't think this is the same friend that every time we go out, bro, like it's so hard from her her to fucking fathom that I'm okay with being by myself. I told y'all this. And I be trying to tell her, like, dude, I am okay. Like when I say I'm okay, girl, I'm okay. I don't need no nigga for shit. Okay, not even to do the little one too, because I got the rose 2.0 for that. You know what I'm saying? So I be trying to let her know that I'm okay. And for whatever reason, and I'm not sure if it's stuff that is went on her past or, you know, just the type of woman that she is. I don't know. But it always seems to be, I just want you to be happy. I just want you to be happy. And it's like, girl, I'm happy. When did I ever indicate that I wasn't happy? Like, I'm trying to understand that. And I don't understand why you feel like it would be a man that would make me happy over anything. If anything, some money would make me motherfucking come. I ain't gonna lie to you. Give me a little change. I'll be all right. But this this whole thing of always wanting to put me with somebody, and I think it's because, I'm gonna tell you what it is, I think it's because she likes to double date. And so she wants me to find a person so we can go out with her husband and um, spend time with them. But it's like, if it ain't clicking, baby, it ain't clicking. I'm not forcing nothing. I'm not jumping into nothing right off the bat. 
A wise person once said, a motherfucker that don't have nothing will help you lose it all. I'm not jumping into no relationship that I do not know this person and they don't have their own shit, right? So we get to talking about that. So I'm using a little bit of elf concealer in the shade Fair Warm to kind of cut my crease. Um, but as we're talking about that, she then says, well, I just think based on your standards, you may be by yourself a while. And I stopped and I look at her and was like, what's the problem with that? I'm not like, was that supposed to scare me? Did I supposed to be on myself? Again, I have become so comfortable with myself and the lifestyle that I live with my children that a man would definitely, you know, bring some, some added joy, but it's not necessary. Like I'm Ari is okay with her. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like when you get to that, level of being okay with you you will stop putting up with fucking bullshit and i don't understand why that's man i'm talking about like we sitting here i'm sitting here talking to her i said so what's the problem well i just i just feel like you know that your standards is high and i'm gonna tell you what my standards are a man has to have all of his own shit because you have to think about it. I'm not really dating nobody my age. And if I do date somebody my age, I want you to bring just as much to the table as I do. Men are so quick to ask you what you're bringing to the table. And yet they ass don't have a table at all. No tablecloth for nothing, right? It's because they want you to bring everything. I'm not taking care of no damn nigga. I don't care in what sense you put it in. I'm not taking care of a man. This is not baby boy. This is not fucking build a bear. I'm not taking care of a man. I don't give a shit what you say. I'm not taking care of a fucking man. Uh, a man has to come already prepared and willing to better yourself. If you are not in a space to better yourself, no amount of, you know, encouragement that you get from me is going to help you be a better man. That will has to come from within you. Everything that I got was on my own based on my own fucking will i'm not telling you to come to the table with a hundred million dollars that's not what i'm asking you what i am asking of a man is that if you come to me that you already have that will in you now can i help you with the drive and ambition absolutely but you have to come with that already instilled in you you can't come to me a broken man and expect for me to inspire and put this off into you that is something that you want on your own when i didn't have enough money to you know pay my fucking bills what did i do it was the will in me that decided you know what I need a better job I want to be able to take my kids places I want to be able to do this I want to be able to do that that was the wheel in me didn't no man come around me and be like all right you know that you could have so much better for yourself and if I could just lift you up then we could get you there that that's my fucking problem and that's what I'm trying to explain to her is she not understanding I just I don't know I just I just think that you're gonna be by yourself for a while well fucking so be it so fucking be it. She goes, well, you know, when I met my husband, uh, now mind you, they didn't been together like 25 years. When I met my husband, you know, he didn't have um, everything and he was able to build that with me by his side. When you met him, y'all was in y'all teens. Okay. All right. Y'all was in y'all damn teens. Of course, people in their teens ain't going to have it all together and have it all figured out. We're talking about dating now. Nigga, I'm, I'm dating people who are in their 30s and 40s. You are one foot in and one foot out of the fucking grave. And you mean to tell me that you still don't have it together? Bitch, I don't I don't have 25 years to fucking figure it out and hope that a man figures it out and, you know, has this this lifestyle that I'm dreaming of in 25 years. I don't have that. And I'm not waiting that fucking long. But kudos to you. I'm not judging you. All I'm saying is I'm not fucking doing that, right? So we're sitting there talking and I'm explaining to her, like, girl, you... You want me to lower my standards and basically settle. If a man can't bring to me what I want, then I'm not doing it. And another thing, like, so if we were seeing these uh, dudes, these dudes walked up on these girls and they was talking to them. And the girls probably ordered two drinks. One for her, one for her friend, right? Two drinks total. I'm talking about, when I said these niggas is cock blocking, these niggas is cock blocking. So no other men can come over here and talk to these two women, right? They at this table for about 30, 40 minutes. The waitress brings out the bill. I'm pretty sure the bill was 35 and the nigga, you, you wasting my time like this that you can't pay for the fucking bill. She like, I, I don't know. I just, I don't, he ain't have to pay for the bill. If you're cock blocking to the point that no other man can come over here and talk to me and you all in my face like this, the least that you could do is pay a 20, $30 bill. If you don't have 20, $30, we, we don't have nothing to talk about. We don't have to call me a gold digger, call me high maintenance, 
babe, so we don't have nothing to talk about. Then, then, so I'm going to get to the rest of it in a minute. But y'all know I went there looking for a little sugar daddy or whatever. This dude is cock blocking. Like when I say heavy, this nigga cock blocking. This fucking security guard. Come over. And he's, he, <laughs> he was not my type. In the slightest, this man was not my type, right? And, you know, I'm I'm nice. Like, I'm not going to just be rude. But I'm also not going to give you my phone number or whatever. So, he comes over and he's like, you just, your aura and your, your, your spirit is just glowing. Like, you got a different type of glow to you. I said, baby, it's hot in here. I'm sweating. He's like, nah, nah, nah. That ain't sweat. That ain't sweat. Like, baby, you glowing. I seen you from across the room. You glowing. Again, I'm trying to curve him in a nice way because, um... There's other men in here, and I don't want nobody thinking that me and you talking or that they don't have a chance. Please get the fuck out of my face. He talking to me the whole time. You know, I got a, a business, um, and then I wrote a book. You want to look up my book on Amazon? Get the fuck out of my face, sir. Please. Please. And when I'm telling y'all, like, I'm not giving feminine energy. Like, I'm giving road dog. Like, what up, nigga? Like, just very hood. And the nigga would still not leave out of my presence. Like, when I tell y'all, I'm so fucking mad. I was so mad. So, he's steady sitting over here talking to me. I'm kicking my friend under the table like, bitch, say we got to go to the bathroom or something. Like, get me out of this situation. Like, I'm not interested in him at all. And you know what's so crazy is I always feel like the people that I do not be interested in. Sorry, that palette that I use for the yellow and stuff, that was the Juvia's Place. Look at it. It's look. Girl, she been in the drawer for a while. This right here is the Juvia's Place Nubian Glow Palette. And I use the orange and yellow out of there to get this little color on the top. But what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Everybody that I be interested in don't ever be interested in me. And then the niggas I have no interest in whatsoever is always the ones that, like, really want me. And I be like, I don't understand why it's so opposite. Maybe that's why I can't find nothing because on these little sites, I got over 100 likes or whatever. And I can't never match with nobody because the niggas that be interested in me, I don't be interested in them. I don't want to do that. I, my life is a mess. Anyway, going in with the Milk Hydro Grip that they sent over. And we're going to apply this all to our face or whatever. Um, But anyway, back to the conversation at hand with my friend so we were supposed to go because it was like another side so where they had us it seemed like the other side was jumping more than our side so we was like all right bet we're gonna go over there and sit at the bar we already you know ate our food or whatever speaking of which my bill was 65 dollars. i had two margaritas and a caesar salad and it wasn't even really no chicken in that fucking salad i just i just wanted to put the i just wanted to let you let that sink in. Two margaritas and a Caesar salad for $65. I'm going to use a little bit of my NARS foundation. Y'all know. Um, and I'm not saying that my friend has to agree with me as far as like my dating preferences. Because you really don't. But I be, I'm the type of friend that even though I don't fucking agree, I be in your corner and I support. Right? And I feel like that kind of backfires. Because I feel like when I be wanting it reciprocated and it's not, it pisses me the fuck off. Which is going to bring me to my next fucking point. Um, so she's like, I just think you should date somebody and, you know, fall in love and all this stuff. And I'm not saying that I'll never fall in love. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that, girl, in my 30s, I have fucking standards. The shit that I accepted in my 20s is not going to be the shit that I accept now. Sending a nigga $20 for his lunch, nigga never paying me back. I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not fucking doing that allowing a nigga to drive my fucking car because his car is in the shop i'm not fucking doing that or because he want to stunt on his baby mama i'm not doing that there is certain shit that i have been through when it comes to niggas and it's certain shit that i've tolerated for so long that now where i'm at now i'm not accepting it and you don't you don't have to agree with it you don't have to like it whatever but i'm not accepting that shit you as a woman if you decide you want to accept that that's on you but don't tell me that i have to lower my standards in order to find somebody bitch i will be single until the day i die okay because bills are still getting paid over here i pay my own shit you know ain't nothing gonna stop because i don't have no man and that's what i be trying to get her to understand like you are banking my happiness and my success on me having a man 
I will still be able to buy my Mercedes. I will still be able to go and buy my house without a man. I don't need a man. So if I don't need one and I'm able to provide for myself without having to bank on anybody, why in the fuck would I allow anybody to come through and be less successful or to come through and give me anything less than what I wanted? That just don't make no sense to me. I'm not settling and I, and I consider that settling. And I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to feel bad for telling a man that I I require more than the bare minimum. I'm not. In my 20s, hell yeah. I'd have, I'd have felt bad. Oh, you don't have it all together right now. It's okay. You know, I do. And I can help you. And, you know, we'll figure it out. And when he get on, he leave your ass all white, girl. <laughs> the fuck out of here with that shit. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not. I'm not doing. No. No. No, and I don't think it's anything wrong with a woman doing that. At this point, like, the standards need to be upped. And I think that's why these niggas do basically whatever they want to do when they want to do it. Because women lower their standards. Don't tell me I have to lower my standards in order to find happiness. Well, fuck happiness if that's what that is. A bitch will stay over here in my little bitter zone if that's what you call happiness. I'm not doing that. Um, this right here is a little bit of my concealer. I gotta see what else is in this milk thing because I think they sent me some blush, but girl, I don't know how to use that. It's the the little powder one. I'm gonna see. Hold on, let me grab it. Okay, so this is what they sent. It's like the cream blush. I've never used these ever a day in my life. This one is in the shade Quickie and it looks like that. Oh, hold on. Quickie and then this one is in the shade Work. And it looks like this one. Okay. So, I think I'm going to do Quickie because Quickie's a little darker. And I feel like I may be able to blend that more than blending the... Hold on. Let me try it on the back of my hand. Ooh. What is that? Ah! Got a little capsule on there. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So, that's Quickie, right? Looks like that. And then let's try the other one for dramatics. Let's see. Look at me trying to be like a little influencer or whatever. I'm doing good with my life. Oh. Okay, and that's the other one. I think that would be a cute lip gloss shade, honestly. Um I don't know. Let's let's try quickie. Cause that one might be too that might be too much for me. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I seen like the little people on TikTok. I probably should have Googled how to do this before I put this on my face. But that's okay. Oh, is it even going? I don't think, oh, I think your girl might be too chocolate for that. <laughs> yeah, uh-uh. Well, it's not really working for me. Um, Maybe? Nope, I don't even see it a little. Yeah, I might be too chocolate for that, love. Sorry. Or maybe I should put that on before foundation. Anyway, we're going to move along. <laughs> then the final straw, which I need to add some of this. Sorry, put some of this in my face. Oh, I'm running out. Damn, this shit ran out so quick. Um, but the final straw was, so, I uh, might as well just go ahead and say. Everybody knows that, well, mostly, if you've been a person over here, then you know. Like, if you watch my channel, you'll know. That my daughter has autism, right? And I think, like, in this autism stage, because my daughter is on the spectrum, but she's extremely fucking smart. Um, not saying autistic people aren't smart, because they are. They're fucking geniuses but I think her autism is a lot different than others autism because the moment that she found out she had autism she used that as like I don't know an excuse for her to behave a certain type of way right so what do I mean when I say that like I mean if she would get in trouble at school or if somebody would tell her to do something that she knows she has no business doing then she would be like oh you know I have autism like, no, that's not really an excuse. Now, prior to her being diagnosed with autism, I had told this particular friend, like, I think there's something going on with my child. I don't know what it is, but, you know, I think it's something going on with my child. Now, granted, she, she, how do I explain this? She came from an era that is a little bit different. You know, therapy was frowned upon and you go to therapy, you're crazy and all this other stuff. So maybe she didn't have as open of a mind as I would have liked because when I came to her and I told her about it, 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 it was always downplayed. 
no. And I, I feel like that, that happened a lot. And I think that's what took us so long to figure out that she had autism is because anytime I try to express to people, there's something going on with my child. She's a little different than what y'all see. And I see at home is completely different. It was always, no, really? Oh, it just couldn't be. Not her. So it was always made out as if I was the fucking crazy one. You know, how, what's that um that thing that they put off on kids? Like a person, a parent makes their child sick intentionally. Munch housing. Munch housing by proxy. I felt like a lot of people felt like I had munch housing by proxy, which I was forcing my kids to be unstable or something going on with my child because it was all made up in my mind. It wasn't until they started to monitor her ass that they fucking found out. Yeah, she's a fucking genius. Yeah, yes, yeah, she's a fucking genius and she's manipulative. But you guys don't want to fucking believe me, right? So whenever, I think that was like really fucking hard for me too because whenever I would go and talk to her about it, it was always, well, no, 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 she couldn't be. But again, I don't know. Maybe it was just completely different, but I felt some type of way, okay? All right, I'm using the Makeup Revolution setting powder in the shade topaz i don't know how this is going to work out but i'm going to try it because i think this is like the same color as that kanifa powder um i'm probably saying it wrong at huda so we're going to try this and just see before i go up here and purchase the damn huda product i want to make sure that i'm even going to like that damn color um but anyway yeah so anytime i would try to express like hey i'm really dealing with this this is a lot on me i don't know what to do it was always downplayed and i feel like listen i'm not perfect I'm not perfect, but when I'm coming to you and I'm expressing things, then it's like, I don't want it to be downplayed. Like, I need you as my friend. I need you to believe me, right? And um, when it, when she was finally diagnosed with autism, then it was like, oh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, that's, that's a good diagnosis. But it's like this whole time I've been telling you that this is what I'm struggling with and you downplaying it the whole time. So, I don't know. But it's like. Listen, when it comes to the way that uh, my friends parent their children, I listen. I may not agree with it. Hell, people may not agree with the way I parent my children. I may not agree with the way you parent your kids. But for me, if I'm going to be your friend, I'm going to ride with you and I'm going to support you a thousand percent on the way that you fucking parent them. Um, there has been times, like I said, her daughter will call me and uh, we'll we'll talk. And I I don't 100% agree with everything, but I'd be like, hey, if that's what your mama told you, that's what the fuck your mama told you. Because I know at the end of the day, your best interests, I mean, those kids' best interests are at, at stake, right? And I know that you would never do anything to intentionally hurt them or harm them. So I'm going to support you. I may not agree with it, but I'm going to support you because I know that you have their best interests at heart right? I don't feel like I get that same courtesy, right? So we got into it because of that. So this isn't like the first time that she's mentioned something about it, right? So before she made a comment, like I'm hard on my kids. Like I'm not hard on my kids. I'm, I'm far from hard on my kids. But what I don't do is allow my kids to disrespect me. We can play, we can have fun, whatever, but you're not going to disrespect me. And contrary to popular belief, like my kids are extremely fucking spoiled. Like I may get on here and be like, I'm not buying them shit else. And the next week they gonna fucking have it. Like my kids are extremely spoiled, extremely. Right. So as much as you may think I'm a hard ass, they get away with fucking murder. Like murder It's some shit. I'd be like, boy, boy, <laughs> y'all really pushing y'all motherfucking limits today. You know what I'm saying? But I've never, I don't know, been a hard ass as she calls me on my children. But it's certain, like, the eye rolls, you talking back to me. My kids know not to play with me like that. Okay, now, if that's how you allow your children to play with you, that's how they play with you. My kids don't don't play with me like that. I don't, certain shit as, from a parent's perspective, like, yes, my children cannot fucking do certain shit. My kids are just allowed to get Roblox, what was it, a year ago, if that? And that shit not already been taken away from them. They do not have a TikTok that's been taken away from them. Because certain shit, my kids can't play with me on, right? You let your kids play with you however you want. I don't judge you on your parenting. Not speaking in general. You you let them play with you however they want. But mine's that I'm raising, no, they can't play with me a certain type of way. No. So we were supposed to, I'm using a little bit of 480 by Fenty. We were supposed to take the children to Hurricane Harbor, right? And she messaged me and she was like, well, I want to take them on a weekday. And I was like, all right, I mean, that's cool. Just let me know so I can take off or whatever and we can go. Um, well, it never happened. So then last night she goes, well, I'm not planning 
nothing else like you gonna have to plan stuff and I was like well I invited you to Hurricane Harbor and you never came so I wound up having to take my children on my own well she then says well it was because of my daughter's punishment now let me give you the background on that again my daughter is autistic so certain things that will work for a normal child does not work for her we've tried it right you know being on punishment in your room girl she eats that shit up because she loves to be fucking alone so punishing her the same way that i punish my son it just it's not fucking working like she just completely fucking different right because i'll be like hey go to your room she's like bitch all right shit i love being in my motherfucking room you know what i'm saying so it don't fucking work so the thing and let me tell y'all what she actually did so you can understand the severity because I think that my friend is missing the severity of the fucking situation and that's what's also pissing me off. So I allow my daughter to and my son to get a Roblox account, but I signed them up for the Roblox account and put the parental controls on the account so that way they, um, they can talk to outside people. You know, they can only talk to their friends. And before they accepted a friend, they had to show me who was this particular friend or whatever. Right. So I had set it up. Now, a couple of weeks prior to them getting out of school, I went through their text messages because I have the ability to go through the text messages on my phone. I'm a helicopter parent. Say what the fuck you want. But I bet you mine's come home every fucking night because I don't play them fucking games. So I was going through her phone. I seen these messages between her and some other little girls that, that she claimed to be her friends. And they were discussing being bisexual, being gay. And I like girls. And do you like girls? And I'm talking to older people in the chat rooms and all this other stuff, right? So I forwarded that on to the parent of the little girl, told the school, hey. And I also told my child, you don't need to be around them. Because for y'all to be 10 and talking about all this extra stuff, like, listen, I don't give a shit if you are gay. I don't care if you're bisexual. I don't give a damn about that. But what I do care about is that you guys are being very sexual on this phone. Now, the one little girl who was texting my daughter, she does have a lot of brothers. So in the back of my mind, I watched a lot of How to Catch a Predator, a lot of First 48. In the back of my mind, I'm like, is it one of the brothers texting my daughter trying to, hey, you want to skip school one day? Come over here and some shit go down, whatever. So to avoid all of that, I blocked that little girl. And then I got in contact with the other little girl's parents and let her know, hey, this is what's going on, right? And I thought that was the end of it. Well, it was not. Again, here go my friend. Oh, you're just... You know, I don't know. Oh, being irrational. This is the same little girl that I have been telling you have been up to stuff and you wouldn't believe in me, right? But now that the proof is right here in front of your face, now all of a sudden you don't have nothing to say. But you try to make it seem like I was crazy. So, um, my son runs in here like a couple weeks ago and he's like, Mom, um, Yaya got something to tell you. And I'm like, well, what does she have to tell me? And so she comes in and she's like, well, I've been talking to strangers online. My son found out because he happened to be looking over her shoulder while he was in her room and saw that she was in these chat rooms. Well, um, and this is on Roblox, right? And I looked through the messages and I'm like, what do you mean you've been talking to people? She's like, oh, I was just role playing. And then this be my thing is like my kid in a message, like when she talked to people, you would think that you talking to somebody that's 38, 39, her vocabulary and everything. I'm not even fucking joking. People be thinking I'd be joking because a lot of times when I say stuff seriously, people think I'll be playing. But no, in this moment right here, like I'm not fucking playing. I'm being so fucking serious. You would think that you're talking to an adult because her vocabulary and her, her intelligence is so fucking high. Right. So I'm going through these messages. She's using these words. But then like when I talk to her, it's like back to being a seven-year-old like she goes into this infant state and I don't understand it or whatever so when she's talking to other adults you wouldn't believe that she wrote these messages because when you talk to her she sound like she fucking 10 her age right but then when you go through these messages you like who the fuck wrote that her she's a fucking genius all right now I'm using a little bit of makeup revolution this right here is in the shade banana I think I gotta go back and get that banana deep but I haven't yet I'm gonna bake with this one um, but anyway, I'm going through the messages and the messages are, hey, baby, and, you know, how old are you? And do you want to be my man? And I never cheated on you. And these are complete strangers, right? And my thing is, it, this ain't the first time this shit didn't happen, right? And I told her previously, I told my daughter, I said, look, you, first of all, you don't know what you're doing, right? Like, you don't know who you're talking to. You don't know if they're a child, if they're an adult, like, you don't fucking know. 
you just out here talking to folks and you know what you're doing is sneaky which is why get hear what i'm saying so she fucking created a private server in the messages she said i created a private server for us for us to chat and she has been chatting with these people it was over like 30 people she's been fucking chatting with back and forth she signed out of the account that i created for her and made up a brand new account this is what i'm talking about she's fucking genius right so the fact that she had been talking to all these unknown people and like i told her you talking to them and you thinking that this is a kid they can show up at my door and anything can fucking happen because she she's giving them her full name she's giving you know the school that she attends and everything so it's like not only are you putting yourself in danger but you could also be putting me and your brother in danger these people are not who the fuck they say they are so because of that she's been grounded like when i say grounded like no normally i'll grind them and then the next day they'll be off because i'm fucking soft like as much as my friends my i'm a hard ass like i am soft as shit i will tell them they on punishment right now and an hour later they will be off like i am not like what do you call that i'm not i don't care i don't follow through on a fucking punishments right i'm very lean when it comes to them because i feel like my mom was a hard ass about shit so i just feel like i'm not going to be a hard ass or whatever but um due to the severity of this situation i was like no and i even screenshot it and sent her the messages right so you know what the fuck i'm dealing with with this child all of the previous punishments did not work so what i did is i said you know what since that's not working for you taking away your phone taking away your tv taking away your ipad none of that seems to be working for you because you just don't give a damn and i'm pretty sure that's why she fucking tried me like that my daughter she tried me like that because she know mom not gonna do shit mom not gonna do shit <laughs> we about to fucking see so um i took away everything i took away the ipad and everything and this summer i told her i'm like it's gonna be a hard ass fucking summer for you because you just keep i keep giving you chances and you keep fucking playing with me this is even after we had a whole conversation about her talking to strangers before now i let that ride she didn't get in trouble she's been in counseling whatever i let it ride this one right here no because it was over 30 plus people that you have been fucking chatting with so her punishment was listen if we go somewhere, your ass just gonna have to go and you're not gonna be able to participate. Like if we go to the arcade, you're not gonna be able to participate in the arcade. Like if we go to um, Hurricane Harbor, you're not gonna be able to participate in Hurricane Harbor. So my friend asked me that and I was like, no, because the severity of this fucking situation, like it's too much. Now, my friend in her mind is like, well, you could just have my daughter watch her. This is the thing with that. You stay an hour away from me, an hour out of the way from Hurricane Harbor. So you wanted me to drive an hour to drop her off at your house just to drive another hour back to Hurricane Harbor, just to drive another hour back to go and get her, just to drive almost an hour and a half back to my house. What sense does that make? And I'm not like completely a fucking asshole, right? So yes, yeah, she was going to have to sit out maybe the first 10 30 minutes of us being there just until i started to see that the shit fucking clicked in her fucking mind listen what i did was wrong and i need to stop fucking doing it then she would have been allowed to fucking swim they just went to hurricane harbor last week and her ass was allowed to fucking swim so you think i'm going to purposely make my child just sit here through it all and even if i fucking did you should have backed me in my decision well your mom said just at just how i back you when your kid calls me and i'll be like well if that's what your mom said that's what your mom said that's that's the fucking problem and i told her that i said you expect for me to be a village for you when it comes to you and your children but when it comes to me and mine even if you do not agree with my decision you can't be my fucking village and that's what fucking pisses me off that is where the divide between me and you is becoming is because right or wrong i ride for you 10 toes down i may not agree with it but what i always tell your child and i told him like you can call your child now i've always told your child if that's what your mom think is best for you if that's what she said then you gotta go for that and you know going forward you know you gotta change your behavior i'm always in support of you as a parent and i feel like you're not in support of me and that's that that's also like what was pissing me off because i felt like you were questioning me as a parent and i don't like to be questioned as my as a, a fucking parent because again i would never do anything to harm my fucking children 
their intellectual, their mental, none of that. I would never do anything purposely to harm them. What I am telling you is that this particular child and anybody who has a kid with autism, then you understand what I'm saying. This particular child does not respond to ordinary discipline. Me taking her tablet away and being like, go in your room. Girl, she have a fucking field day with that. She'd be like, all right, bitch, because she artistic. She artistic, not autistic, artistic. So she love to draw shit. She's, she love all of that. So she'd be in there drawing like, all right, bitch, <laughs> let me go ahead and draw this. She got her paint and stuff. She will be in there having a fucking ball. My son, 10 minutes in his room, he didn't, he make a show the door open. He out in the hallway. So he cry. Because ah! ah! <laughs> he distraught. And I'll be like, it just, it's. I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but it frustrates the fuck out of me in that aspect. Like, I love the shit out of her. I will never stop loving her. Like, that's always going to be my dog. But in that aspect of it, that bothers me. The whole time while my daughter was on punishment, this girl did not come out and ask me, Hey, mom, can I be on punishment? Because I know when I was in, in my room, I would be like, I'm done. I'm ready to come out, mom. Like, I know how to behave. I know what to do. Her ass... Come on, thug that shit out. Like, she was having a blast. Not one time, not one time did she say, can I come off of punishment? She don't care. Like, and that's a part of autism as well, is that they have the inability to feel empathy or remorse for anything that they've done. That's what that's what I be trying to get through to my friend, but she don't want to fucking listen. Don't ask me, did I have a second opinion? Dog, I've had 50 opinions on this. She has been to clinical therapists. She's been to psychiatrists. She's been to um, school psychologists. Like, she's been to everything under the fucking sun. Everything under the fucking sun. And when I think about it, like, I don't have no support. So when I come to you and I tell you something that I'm experiencing, I need for you to support me in that instead of trying to make it seem like I'm fucking crazy. This is some of the Kush Mascara from Milk. Um, I'm going to try this now. Oh my goodness, I can't even get it open. They done sealed this bitch all the way with the tape. Jeez Louise. But when I was trying to get my daughter diagnosed with um, something, I didn't know what she had. I didn't know if it was autism. I did not know. So I couldn't tell the therapist or the doctors. Like I could just tell you how she was behaving. It was your job to diagnose her. But I felt like when I was trying to get that done um, and people were trying to make it seem like, oh no, she's perfectly fine. Like she's good because they were looking at her academically, academically. Yeah. She, she's extremely fucking smart. She excels, but I felt like, and I do not say this like with malice or whatever, but I felt like, you know how people be doing shit they ain't got no business doing like, you know, them kids be committing, you know, the unaliving of people and stuff like that i felt like look as a parent bro like if i'm trying everything that i can to get fucking help and nobody's listening like you're just allowing this cheap this child to go out and do this because you're not fucking listening so if something tragic that was my whole thing like if something fucking tragic happens like this gonna be on y'all because i fucking told y'all i fucking told you i don't want nothing in the media talking about oh you know the mom didn't do anything no the mom did everything the the fucking teachers and shit and the psychologists and the the psychiatrists are not fucking listening to what i'm trying to say like god forbid i'm not putting it out there that anything's gonna happen i'm just saying i understand you know, now I would not place the blame on the parent before I would. But now seeing how hard it is to get fucking help, especially for brown and black children, it, I could understand because I'm telling y'all, they made it seem like I was fucking crazy. It took almost two, three years to get her diagnosed. And I'm also aware that like that's a trigger for me. Like when anybody questions my parenting and the reason why it's a trigger is because like my mom used to always be like you're not a good parent you're not a good parent or they call cps on me don't say all that child the the rabbit hole of me and my mother is so fucking long i will probably be like a 30 part series on that i need to write a fucking book um but yeah that that's a complete trigger for me and it was like girl how you gonna tell me how to be a fucking parent and you was never one make it make sense ma'am um so yeah when she fucking says well i'm i'm not in agreement with um the way that you parent or i didn't want to be a part of her punishment and all this other stuff all i heard was you're not a good fucking parent that's all i fucking heard 
you know, I'm again, I've been through therapy so many fucking times and I'm still in continuous therapy because I know I'm so a little bit off. I know she didn't say that, but that's what I fucking heard. And because I heard that, like, girl, I don't want to do shit else. I literally went home after that because, again, I, I just feel like I support her. And let me tell you something. At the end of the day, that's still my bitch. That's always going to be my bitch. If you don't have ups and downs with your friends, are y'all really even friends? Because it's like they're a yes man, right? In any type of situation. All I'm saying is... In my type of situation, I just, I, I would like a little bit more support for my friend. The same fucking support I give her, I would like that in return. Like, I feel like in other aspects, definitely 100%, 10 toes down, I be getting her support. But in the aspect, um, as far as like me being a parent, I don't always get that. And that's very, and it could be like our, our separate upbringings too. Have I vocalized, hey, that's a trigger for me? No. Can I do better on doing that? Absolutely. Am I going to tell her that? Yeah. When? I don't know. I don't know. Cause y'all know I'm not really big on confrontation like that. So I'll, I'll, I'll debate on whether I'm going to say it, but for right now, I think I just need to, to, you know, keep my space and, and just focus on me for right now. We still going to be cool. We always going to be cool. That's my dog. You know, it's like sisters. You have your ups and you have your downs, you know? One minute, y'all be fighting like cats and dogs, and the next, y'all be cool. That's just how we is. But in this moment, like I said, I just, I don't feel supported. And I don't feel like I'm wrong for not feeling supported because when it comes to hers, I'll be, I be in your corner. I don't feel like I'm getting that right now. That's all. Use some of this milk eyeliner, too. Oh, that's very pigmented. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I think this makes up for the blush for sure. Because um, I may have just applied it incorrectly. Y'all know me. I always apply shit wrong. But um, milk, that, that blush wasn't on dark skin. I don't know. I might have just applied it incorrectly. I don't know. I got to Google it and see. But I'm just saying. I don't know about that one. All right. Let's go in and blend out our under eye. Um, and then we're done. I just got to do my lips, which I know the routine there. If you guys have made it here, make sure you guys go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. I apologize for being late today. I did have to go, um, take my children to the movies. So this upload is coming late. And as I told y'all, I did not upload. Um, I mean, I didn't record cause yeah, fasting and drinking do not go well together, you know? So there's that. Let's go ahead and spray our face using the microfine. I don't know where my elf went. Very generous with, generous with that just to make sure all the makeup kind of melts. And then I'm going to take my fan and blow. So then we're going to go in and line our lips using cinnamon roll out of the Jaclyn Hill palette. Um, and I'm just going to line my lips up. Moral of today's story is to make sure that you guys are being mindful of your friendships. And make sure you listen because that's really important. You know, sometimes like you don't have to have all of the answers, but just listening to your friends is, is very important. Don't make them feel like they're crazy, girl. Not done my hot chocolate by Fenty in a while, so I'm gonna try it and see what happens. And then I have um, this little pink color over here. I got this when I was like sampling lip glosses because I thought I was gonna have my own lip gloss line. It didn't pan out, girl. I'm gonna put that right there in the center. Maybe kinda sorta. Now I just want like a little bit more pink. So I'm gonna use my creme brulee. I'm lying. This is not creme brulee. This is Eclair by NYX. All right, guys. So here we are. This is the finished look. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Overall thoughts of the e.l.f. that I used today, the Power Grip. I'm sorry. I did not use e.l.f. Power Grip. Sorry. I used the milk. Milk kind of reminds me of e.l.f. Power Grip, girl. If you ain't got the $40 to spend on the milk hydro primer stuff this thing right here go ahead and get you the elf power grip i think they one in the same child um i do like this though like 
it has the makeup like it gripped it and has it setting so i'm definitely here for it but i do think that the elf power grip is just as good in my opinion so there's that their eyeliner is definitely bomb i don't normally wear like a lot of black eyeliner in my um my waterline anymore but today we used it girl and it's it's giving okay the two products that i definitely wanted to go over i told y'all about makeup revolution setting powders like i am in love i'm sorry not setting powders baking powders i'm in love with those baking powders so what i actually did today to achieve like this golden bronzy look that i have going on and i think i like this one way better is i actually set with the um beauty bakery baking powder not Beauty Bakery, sorry. This is Makeup Revolution. I'm looking at some losing my mind. The Makeup Revolution baking powder, and this one is in the shade Terracotta. I don't know where I was saying Topaz for. I have something that's in the shade Topaz. But this one's in the shade Terracotta, and you guys see how it's like more of like that yellow undertone, which is why I wanted to try this one before I went and purchased the Huda Beauty one, because I feel like the Huda Beauty one is just like this same color. I looked at it online. I don't know. I'm going to try, but it's, girl, I got to drive an hour and a half to go and get it. I don't trust the Ford delivering me nothing because they messed up my last order. So I have to drive an hour and a half to go try to get it. But this one, I feel like is a dupe. I have not seen this one in stores, not to say they don't carry it anymore. They may. Um, or you may have to order it online or it may just be gone, girl. I don't know because I got this probably when I first started YouTube. So 2019, 2020, something like that. Okay. But this one definitely cute because I feel like it doesn't wash me out. Like it still gives me that warm, bronzy look. Now, I did pair that with the banana. Girl, don't, don't talk about this label. I told y'all this shit's old. Okay. Do not. But I did pair it with this uh, banana from Makeup Revolution. So these two, I baked, I set with this one, then I baked with this one. And girl, the bronziness, the warmth that I still have on my skin is like absolutely amazing. For these little carve out sections over here, I did use the Beauty Bakery in the shade Almond to carve those out. And again, I, I just feel like it still gives me that warm look that I was looking for. Like I don't look white. I don't look, you know. It, it just it, it's doing what it's supposed to do but anyway this is it i love you guys and i will see you guys next time